Welcome to this week's weekly mini. I'm Carolyn, your host for this bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. A few things before we get started. As always, you can reference all of our previously previously recorded weekly minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. I'll put a direct link in the comments for you today during our broadcast. If you have any questions while we're live, We'll drop them, uh, please, please feel free to drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know that we're here. Today, we are so fortunate to have Michelle McBride to talk about exams from the, tu from the studio perspective. Now, Michelle, you may be familiar with, uh, she's been here with us before, and we're so grateful for that. She has a degree in visual communication design and has worked in the industry for 20 years. She works with Acrobatic Arts as our marketing director and also consults with several local studios. She's worked with large national and international brands to small local businesses and government agencies. Michelle has been a dance instructor for over 25 or for over 20 years and is a certified instructor in the acrobatic arts syllabus, acro dance, uh, preschool, aerial arts, and is a certified adjudicator. Now, she's also here today to talk to us uh, about the teacher and studio perspective in regards to exams, because as I said, she's been a dance instructor for over 20 years, but she is also the acro director at Dance Theme Academy in Edmonton, Alberta, and she's been certified for eight years with acrobatic arts and has been running exams for eight years. Michelle, welcome. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. We made it. I am so excited. As you know, I always love chatting with you. Now, typically when we're chatting, it's it's a lot about marketing and communications. And I think that that um, will lend itself to our conversation as we get to uh, communicating about exams with parents and kids and stuff like that. Right. Um, but today we really wanted to give our teachers, especially those who are on the fence, an opportunity to talk with somebody about exams from a peer perspective, somebody who's run exams and knows it from the inside. Um, so um, I'm sure you know that's why you're here today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So um, let's let's get right to it. Why don't you tell us just, I, I gave you a little uh, bio, but tell us a bit about yourself, uh, where you teach and what you teach um, and your a little background on yourself in terms of dance. So I've trained as a dancer since I was eight. And then uh, I have been teaching for over 25 years actually, but I try not to tell people that. <laughs> just 20 is good. Um, I used to teach strictly jazz, um, uh, contemporary, lyrical, a little ballet, a little tap. And then since being certified, I've kind of transitioned just strictly to teaching acro and just finding my um, my groove in acro. I really love the progressions of it. I love how the syllabus works. So um, I've just kind of, you know, kind of veered that way in my path of my dance career. So I teach mainly at Dance Theme and um, I am the acro director there. And then I teach at several studios around the city. Um, as well as do workshops and things like that. So I kind of have a perspective of different studios as well as like a home base studio. Right. That's what I was going to say is you really have a great perspective because you have that perspective from the inside um, of acrobatic arts, but also then a, a plethora of other acro studios experiences, environments, including the one that you're the acro director at. So yeah. you did mention syllabus and acro together. So let's get right to it. Um, I know that you're passionate about the syllabus. I know you're passionate about exams. So why and we'll break it down after this, but why pro exams and why do you want to share that? So for me, um, I, I was raised in an exam environment. We always took ballet exams, jazz exams, tap exams. Um, so when acro came into play, it was kind of like learning like what the progressions are, what is the expectation of the skill, and especially me having no background in acro, I really took to the, to the syllabus and what was required in the exam. So I can look at those things as I train students, like what is the foot placement? You know, how are they working? You know, upper body work. work. Um, so for me, I, I really liked as a teacher, I could really be accountable and, and really know like the nuances of the skills. Um, and I just kind of, when I teach at studios that aren't exam focused, I do notice a, very, a vast difference between the student, um, between um, their drive, their motivation, uh, and their technique kind of attention to detail. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, it's, it's not uh, for us at acrobatic arts, we have this conversation um, with a lot of teachers and professionals in the industry. And that is one thing that really seems to come back and ring true. in a lot of those conversations is that exactly. So we're mm -hmm. going to break that down just a little bit further and why it gets to that place. But when we talk about your studio, what's the focus of your studio? Is it exams, competitions, both like, how does that, how does acro fit in and, and the exams? So um, our studio is a competitive studio. It's a highly competitive studio. Um, and Acro kind of came into play because we were bringing in choreographers that needed, you know, these big skills. Like back then it was like the side aerial, eh, you, need, you needed a side aerial. So um, we certified so that we could kind of um, appease those, those choreographers. And then we kind of thought, you know what, like let's bring this, this program in. So we do compete. I don't compete acro until after level four, just because they have like a better, um, you know, skill base. They're very safe. They know how to do skills um, and you can provide a little bit more variations. But um, mostly the, their acro benefits everything. It benefits their ballet, their jazz. Um, it's great for hip hop. So it, it kind of gets them into that well roundedness. And I even run, you know, like acro workshops for hip hop dancers strictly so that they can learn how to apply acro to that, that, um, that discipline. And for the uh, exams, it was just a natural fit because we do all those exams in other disciplines. We, we brought it in and the kids love it. Absolutely love it. And I love it because for me, I get feedback as a teacher. It's a check-in for me to say, okay, this is what I'm training, right? Like the first year I did exams, I was teaching um, like two consecutive four rolls wrong. And I was like, well, my hands are the wrong way. And, and you know, after the examiner was awesome, she said, you know what? I think you've just got the hand placement wrong because I saw it across the board. So that check-in makes me accountable in, in uh, my teaching. I, I adore, adore it. Right, so it creates some structure, some goalposts, uh, some accountability, not to mention, and I know you and I could talk about this for a while, but just the support that's provided by acrobatic arts mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and the support materials and resources there. Okay, so yeah. I know you said you see a difference in technique, you see a, a difference in attention to detail, commitment level, and how well-rounded the dancer is. Um, what do you see in the outcomes after the students have taken an exam? What's their feedback back and their growth? For first time exam students, they're very nervous because they have a misconception um, of what an exam is. And if you think about um, how exams work for uh, school, like there's like that exam anxiety. And so I try and like really um, hone that down a little bit and try and help them out as much as possible to, to calm those those anxieties because it is like a live class. It's, it's not a stressful environment. The teachers and the um, examiners are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. They're very supportive and sweet. Um, students can ask if they do a skill and they kind of fumble it, they can ask to perform it again or the examiner will say, hey, you know, do you want to try that again? I think you can do better, you know, like, you know, so it's got that environment that's really um, supportive and set up for success is the big thing. Okay, and so, um in terms of success, as you mentioned, what steps do you take to ensure the success of your students in the exam? So we train for 10 months straight. Um, I like doing my exams after everything is done. So they're done recital, they're done um, ballet and tap exams, they're done uh, competitions. So their brain is focused solely on exams. Uh, we start, we do lots of the exam skills, but we do lots of like progressions and variations and things like that in the first couple months of the year. And then in January, we're like exam focused because uh, their exams are at the end of June normally. So um, we we train those exams. I give them a, their progress cards about five months before the exam. And we talk about, okay, so these are the areas of improvement. This is what you can work on at home. Mom and dad or, or parent or guardian sees like what's happening in the exam. If I have a student that just, you know, out of the 28 skills, they're missing like 15 to 20, maybe it's not the year for the exam right now. Maybe we need to do it next year or do a PIN uh, program instead. Um, if they're close then I say, okay, hey, like let's sign up for the exam. We'll be ready in five months. Um, we do a mock exam so they know exactly what's gonna happen, where they stand, how it works, um, what the expectation is. I give them a report card from that exam. They can take home and work on that. Um, and then the exam day, I'm, I'm supportive. I'm there the whole time they come in. 
you know, like I help them with their hair, get them ready to go, push them in the room, <laughs> say, have fun. Um, but we also do, because we have the ADRC, so exam students have the option to train with the My Acro app. And last year was the first year we did that, implemented that, and it was awesome because the kids could practice at home. They could tick off, okay, these are the things I'm working on, Miss Michelle, can you come look? Um, so having that extra support so they can video, they can watch the videos yeah. is, is huge, 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 huge. Okay, we'll put a link um, after we are off today in the comment section so people can find the Acro Dance Resource Center, which is the ADRC, which is Michelle was mentioning, and the My Acro app, so that you understand what those resources are. But certainly, they they do provide that um, opportunity to support students at home and in the studio, absolutely, and the teachers. Yeah, <laughs> so good. So what I get from this though is is that. Um, it is a, an open dialogue with the teachers, between teachers, parents, students, mm -hmm. um, even the adjudicator, like there is an environment of support because when we think about exams, um, there obviously is something to achieve, to perform, to um, show uh, and get feedback on, but the idea is that it's not big and scary. It is mm -hmm. something you have to show up for and do well and prepare for, but that it's a constant conversation to make sure that you're prepared and the students are prepared, the teachers are prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my big thing is that, um, you know, it's, it's the exams are a life lesson. They're, they're not a dance lesson. I mean, that's a part of it, but it's a life lesson. It's showing up and, you know, being properly groomed, wearing the proper, uh, you know, like uh, attire, um, having that discipline of within yourself to train for the exam and then having that discipline in a professional environment. So we're teaching them life skills that can apply to college, university, it could apply to future careers, even if it's not in dance, um, because I know there's a small population that goes into a dance career. Um, the larger population, I'm trying to get them ready to be humans in the in the real world. And I always tell them, like, this is a great way to set challenges for yourself, set goals, achieve those goals, um, you know, and work your way towards something. So I think the exam is more of a life, life lesson than it is, you know, just an acro lesson. And that's what I talk to about the parents, yeah. with the parents. And a lot of times, like, I'm the only teacher at, at any of my studios where if it's watching week, they're like... Lots of teachers are like, oh, I'm only going to do 10 minutes. I'm only kind of coming for 10 minutes. I get the parents in for the full hour. Yeah. They come in. I talk directly to them like, this is what we're doing today. This is what you're allowed to do at home. This is what your child can do. This is what's safe. This is what's not safe. Yeah. Um, and, and really have that open communication with them is really important so that they're, they feel safe with their child in my care um, and in their investment in their child. Right, which I think... So um, I will say now, because um, I know we're getting to the end of our chat, but it's a you know a great opportunity if anybody, if you are a teacher that has questions about um, how to prepare your students successfully for exams, or you're not yet committed to running exams at your studio, or you're finding that you're getting pushback from parents or the studio owner, um, you know, if you've got some questions, it's a perfect opportunity to talk to a peer about it and get some feedback. Obviously, um, you know, we're at Acrobatic Arts and, and anything you post will also be seen by other teachers who could also give you more information. But what I wanted to say in the meantime, while people are considering that, Michelle, is that, you know, we do hear from teachers. And in fact, this week we heard from a teacher who is really concerned because the parents aren't convinced and therefore, um, you know, they've got kids that are falling off commitments to the exams and they're sort of seeing this and, and i don't know where it comes from sometimes maybe it happens and it just happens to be coincidence but that there's a run on that like people mm -hmm. not, so is there some and i know you've talked about it a little bit but in, you're a communicator and a marketer how can teachers studios communicate the value of exams better to parents so they understand the return on investment because often it is an extra investment. So they're doing competition and they're paying for that and costumes and recital and then also exams on top of that. So um, what would you say to them to how to communicate that value better? Yeah, like it, it to me, it is a huge value. And and, you know, I do appreciate that my kids compete and they and they do a great job there. But I do see more value in in the exams. They if they take all of the exams, they can um, do the teacher, pro, the graduate program, and then they be, can become an acro teacher. And a lot of times the kids that I teach are way better than I am. And I'm like, look at you like you'll be a phenomenal teacher because I can't do a walkover like you're amazing. So um, when I talk to the parents about the value of it, um, and, and this is kind of where I stem from, is that uh, the students that I find don't want to examine 
kind of limit their, themselves and they only want to do, well, I only want to tumble. I only want to balance. I don't want to limber. I don't want to work on flexibility. Um, and they kind of limit themselves where is, you know, kind of the, the mental, you know, mind frame is, you know, this is good enough. Whereas the exam kids is I'm going to do my best and I'm going to do my best every single week coming in. So they're really, you know, challenging themselves and progressing as much as they can and allowing themselves to progress. And even when they have those mental blocks, we work through those mental blocks going forward. So again, like I feel like it's a life lesson and it's, you know, facing challenges, setting goals and um, achieving those goals. And that's what I talk to the parents a lot about. I had, I just want to tell a quick story about, I had a girl who's older. She was 16 at the time during COVID. We, we um, postponed our exams. And when she came back, she couldn't do the skills she could do before. And it, it was a rough pandemic for many kids. And she kept saying to me, she thought, I don't want to do my exam. I just don't want to do it anymore. I'm not comfortable with it. I can't do the skills. I lost my flexibility. And, and so I talked to her mom and I said, so what do you want to do here? Like, I don't want to put someone in that doesn't want to take the exam. And her mom said, you know what? I want her to finish. I want her to do this. She signed up for this. She made a commitment. She, she's going to face this challenge. I want her to work towards it. So she worked her butt off. <laughs> she worked her butt off. I, I worked with her as much as possible. I encouraged her because she, in her mind, she did not think she could do it until she walked into the exam. It was really hard getting her confidence up. When she came out, she's like, I think I did okay. I'm not sure. And she did awesome. She got great marks, great results. She was so happy. I almost cried when I got her results. I was like, you did it. We did it. We faced it together. And so, and I think her mom saw the value in that of like, you know, you've committed to something, you face this challenge, you, you achieve it. And I think it's, again, it's just creating these habits in these kids that will apply to them as adults in any kind of scenario, whether it's a, a career or academic pursuits. So I, I normally tell them it's, it's that, that, you know, like that challenge setting, that goal setting. Yeah, it really seems to me that uh, the exam mindset is a bigger picture perspective in the long term yes. um, success of the dancer in terms of their future, like you said, in life and in dance, should they want to pursue it as a teacher, a career, a competition, whatever it is, it only feeds into that. It's almost like the training grounds for all the rest and the yeah. rest is just the icing on the cake. So I think it is, and I know you would agree um, as we wrap up, but that it really is, it, it is really about communicating that well to parents mm -hmm. so that they understand fundamentally and that you reinforce that value in your studio communications that that is important to your studio and although many studios provide a um what do you call alternate like a that it's not mandatory um yeah. that it is something that comes of high regard and value i think is really important now um what about last thing last question what if what would you say to a teacher who is on the fence like from somebody who didn't do exams before you know even eight years ago is not that long so where you were at that maybe you know that you understand from that perspective of of just not being completely convinced what would you say to them as as a fellow teacher i think you know i just went through this with a studio who is not an exam studio at all they don't do any exams it's only strictly competition and i said i really think the kids would benefit from you know taking an, an exam you know like would you ever implement them and it was it was a back and forth conversation and she said and, and i said like it's just going to benefit them in the long run like any of their competitive groups their choreography their ballet their hip-hop everything like acro really lends to all those disciplines and i finally said like this is going to make them better dancers well-rounded dancers and acrobats not just acrobats and so we finally, you know, step we're, we're doing them this year. They're signed up for their first ones. I am, you know, I have if you don't have enough students, you can do the global exams. And I was really skeptical. And when I went into I, I put three kids um, into the global exams uh, like a while ago and it was awesome. They came out and they were like, that was great. I didn't think it would be so good. And, and I, I was just super happy with um, the result. The exam comments were exactly the same as they would be in person. Um, they were the examiners were still personable. They connected with the kids. They made sure the kids were doing well. Um, the Marie welcomed them in and it was just so warm. Like if you want to try an exam, try the global set first and see how you feel about it, because it's a great way to, especially if you, you don't have 20 students, like it's a great way to integrate the kids into the program. And it's a great way for you to kind of show the, the um, value to parents. 
So, I, yeah, I, I just want to recap. I've talked to several teachers in a similar conversation and they all say the same. So I, I just want to reinforce that what Michelle is saying is so valid. The kids come out from every teacher I've talked to, they come out that excited. And the, I think you make a great tip on the global exams. Online exams are a great place to start. Kind of mm -hmm. keep really focused on those elements that you want to focus on. And then you ex can expand to those in-person exams um after that which are another great opportunity and challenge you and your students in a different way so michelle we have a question um cool. so uh dancer i think it's lele says how do you share the results with kids so they don't compare themselves to others um i normally talk to them individually uh, i i when i see the kids in the studio i don't send them to them by email i talk i sit them down and i, and I always check in with them first especially so when they walk out the door, how do you think you did? Well, I messed up on this skill. Okay, but how was everything else? I think I felt good. Are you proud of yourself? Yes, I'm proud of you. Great. The results come in and then I always pull them aside and I said, what do you think, how do you think you did? And, yeah. and they'll say, oh, you know, I'm not sure. And I said, well, you did so good. Like I've never had a child fail. I've always had good, good um, comments, very helpful comments. And even comments that me as a teacher, I've missed and, and have learned from and gone, oh my gosh, sure. I'm doing this. Like I need to make sure. So um, I, I send, I give them their results individually. I don't share them across the board. That's, that's theirs if they want to share it, but it's very personable because that's where my connection comes in with them, shows them how much I care and support them, um, how much the studio supports them. So for me, it's it's very much, uh, you know, like one on one. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that question. I think it just once again reinforces uh, the power of exams. It's it's so intrinsic, it's so personal, and they're really if there's any competition, it's really it's a, it's within themselves. It's about bettering themselves as opposed to a dance competition where they are really out of control in that situation because there are so many other elements they can't control, right? And, and competition is so subjective, whereas an exam is global standard. So yeah. you're like, it, it's across the board the same. It doesn't matter if you're in Asia, it doesn't matter if you're in South Africa, it's across the board, the same marking system. So you're really against, you're, you are, you're working against yourself and you're not, not against, that's not the right word, but you're challenging yeah. yourself. It's an internal piece. It's not, I'm against so-and-so, I'm against so-and-so. It's, it's what you're doing and how you can improve yourself. Right, which, you know, back to Dancer Lelia's question is really about reinforcing that in the studio mm -hmm. about the value of that and so minimizing the comparison factor because it's not really relevant in this. Kind of it's not it's it's personal growth and it and it's it's your journey it's the, yeah. the an individual students journey I never share them I always just make sure that the results are positive. Um, and and how I how, how I react to the students is very positive and, and supportive. Well, I'll tell you, Michelle, if I had, if I was teaching ACRO right now, I would definitely be signing up my students for ACRO. Great job. Thank you so, so much. Um, teachers, thank you so much for being here as well. If, if you have any questions, um, Michelle is part of our acrobatic arts community. She is in the certified group. She is on acrobatic arts mm -hmm. Facebook page. If you have any questions, please post them. We'll make sure uh, we get back to you. Um, Michelle, thanks again. For our certified teachers that are ready to commit, for uh, first time exams. Um, don't forget that March 31st is the last day to qualify for our mock exam contest where you could win a free mock exam consultation with acrobatic arts principal Sandra Elliott. If you'd like more information about our syllabus exams or our acrobatic arts teacher training certification, we have a number of courses, both online and in person that are available to you and may be coming to your area soon. This summer is a perfect time to level up teachers, get your students ready for next year's exams. Spots are going fast. This is your time visit acrobaticarts.com once again thanks to michelle for being here today and sharing so much valuable information thank you teachers for joining us for this week's weekly mini join us next week we'll be back in the studio working with vicky fletcher with the tutorial on the cartwheel mounter it's going to be exciting you can learn more about everything above at acrobaticarts.com and join us again next week we'll see you then thank you so much for being here bye